SVG, thank you so much for being with us. Very exciting announcement. Major move from you since you took over this company. So tell us first, what is the Instacart platform and what is the data that you saw that told you that your grocery partners wanted it? Well, thanks for having me, Georgia. So the Instacart platform is a suite of enterprise grade tools to power the future of grocery. And uh, it's important to remember that in our journey, we started by bringing uh, grocery online. And then as we did that, we developed a lot of expertise uh, in grocery. And our retail partners started asking us to bring that consumer expertise that we had developed on the Instacart app to their own properties. So we started developing storefronts for them. We started doing fulfillment for their own websites. And so Instacart platform is kind of the next chapter in that journey where we're taking all of our expertise and we're putting it in the hands of our retail partners. One of the most interesting things about this announcement um, is that you guys are moving into quick delivery or quick commerce. I'm not sure what you call it, but there's a lot of players in this space raising a lot of money. There's also been some businesses that haven't been able to cut it. Why go into quick commerce now? How does that change? or not change the Instacart business model? So first off, it's really important to understand that our approach to quick commerce is completely different from the approach that quick commerce players are taking. Uh, quick commerce players are disintermediating our grocers. They are owning their own inventory. We are not doing that. We are enabling our grocers. We are gonna run these nano fulfillment centers on behalf of our grocers so that they can offer 15 minute delivery. And the other thing that's important about this space is that quick commerce players are only focused on the small part of the market where people really need things in 15 minutes. And why we think it's important, uh, we don't think that's the entirety of the market. We think that sometimes you need things in 15 minutes, but very often you're still going to need your weekly shop in two hours or even delivered next day. And we offer all of these different modalities of commerce, both on our marketplace and for our retail partners, which is a very very big difference and makes us, as a result, a, a lot stronger compared to these players. I agree. It is such a key distinction. And I know Fiji and Porvo before you have always emphasized that partnership with grocers. I often ask, you know, the dash marts of the world, you know, how you can continue to deliver and compete. You guys are really keeping sort of that partnership sacred, which is interesting. At the same time, this model is different because then what Instacart typically does, because you guys are the ones building these carrot warehouses, right? So talk a little bit about how you decided on sort of this more capital intense model. What it, I, I know you can't give us numbers, but what it sort of means for your bottom line. Well, I think, again, it's really important uh, to understand that this model complements our um, existing model. And so that means that the vast majority of our business is still going to be delivered from stores. And so these facilities that we're building are complementing the stores so that we can enable 15 minute delivery. Uh, but they're not uh, contrary to the quick commerce pl uh, players. We don't need, you know, so many of these facilities to serve our customers because our retail partners already have large store presence. Uh, and so we are uh, definitely being cautious in how we're rolling out this real estate. And our goal is to find uh, these warehouses close to customers uh, for, uh, to, for delivery in 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. And a good example is what we're doing with Publix, where we're rolling that out in Miami and Atlanta, uh, but doing that in uh, complement to their existing stores. Fiji, Instacart is, I believe, 10 years old this year, right? Where, where and I hate to simplify this, but just even, even Amazon kind of does this. Where's your head at in terms of weighing growth and investment in that growth versus profitability? We're very focused on growth because we think we're still in a very underpenetrated market. We're you know, less than 10% penetrated online. We think it's going to go to 30% over the next five to 10 years. So we have a decade of growth ahead of us and we're really focused on that. But the reason we can focus on growth and be confident in our model is because we have unit economics that we believe in and that make us profitable. And so even though we're gonna, you're gonna see us do a lot of these investments and sometimes uh, you know, go unprofitable in order to fund these investments, uh, we are doing that very carefully because we know that our unit economics are, are stable and that they, they allow us to invest more to, uh, towards the future. 
And, you know, speaking of that advertising, which I know that you guys have, have been ahead of in many cases than some of the other gig economy players, um, any indication you can give us on how big a part advertising is of total revenue? Can you give us any color there? It's already a very big part, and we think it's only going to get bigger in the future because what we're seeing is that given the incredible results that brands are getting through Instacart ads, they're continuing to invest more. So we're seeing advertising revenue grow faster than our overall um, sales and GTV. Uh, and that's why we are actually bringing this advertising model to our retailers with carrot, carrot ads which we're also announcing today, uh, because our retailers are trying to stand up retail media operations because they know that advertising is an important part of making online grocery profitable. Right. And we want to bring our technology, our demand, our ad sales, and our expertise in building ad product to them uh, so that they can stand up these businesses in a much easier way. So Fiji, something we've been talking a lot about on CNBC is this sell-off we've seen in tech stocks in the public markets and increasingly we're hearing and reporting on private markets seeing this valuation compression as well with some of the you know darlings that have raised a lot of money over the last few years instacart included the information reporting that some large investors have marked down their stakes in instacart i'm sure you can't comment on that but what has sort of the last few months when we've seen this valuation compression meant for employee morale and your ability to really retain and hire talent? Well, I think it's very clear that we are part of a market that has uh, very much readjusted. You know, we uh, we want to be the best retail enablement uh, company and one of the best ones. Shopify is down. We want to be one of the best advertising company and one of the best ones with Meta is down. Uh, and same thing for our marketplace peers where uh, obviously DoorDash is down. So uh, I, I think we would be you know, silly to assume that if we were a public company, we wouldn't be affected. We believe that our business is incredibly strong. Uh, we believe that uh, we will definitely uh, outperform our peers over the long run but uh, we are fundamentally part of a market that has readjusted. And in terms of, you know, employee morale, like our, our number one thing is always to do right by employees. And uh, what, what we are doing is very much mimicking uh, what we would do if we were a public company already so that employees uh, feel like they're taken care of. Are you seeing inflation hit grocery sales and revenue? Yes, we're definitely tracking that closely and we are seeing uh, definitely price increases. As you know, on Instacart, the model is that our grocers set the price and we reflect them on our marketplace and our grocers are definitely uh, you know, selling higher prices. And um, what we're seeing is that people are kind of adjusting their, their habits as a result of these uh, price increases. And we see our job as providing them with more opportunities to save, which is why we've rolled out a deal stab so that they see all of the discounts that are available to them on Instacart and many other options like bringing dollar stores onto the platform uh, so that people can still, you know, fill out their weekly basket at a reasonable price. Interesting. You have brought on dollar stores more recently amid this higher inflation. Well, because of wanting to make the service more accessible to everyone yeah. more generally, and then obviously to help um, uh, with giving people just lower cost options. That's fascinating. And you're seeing more demand towards dollar store? We're seeing more demand places. towards dollar store. We're seeing more demand towards, uh, you know, discounts and people being really sensitive to uh, to discounts. So that's a good tool for our um, advertising and CPG partners to use uh, to make the products more accessible and get discovered at the same time. So we offer all of these tools so that everyone wins, consumers, retailers and advertisers. Finally, Fiji, um, what do you look for in terms of going public? I know that you can't say when, we always ask, I'm not asking when, but how do you know if you're ready? Has that changed over the last few months when we have seen um, investor calculus change amid rising rates, rising inflation and macroeconomic conditions? 
Well, I think, you know, for us, we want to be a public company at some point. The market conditions are obviously a factor, but uh, given that we have a very strong business and not a need to raise a lot of money, um, these market conditions are not affecting us and affecting our timing particularly. The thing that's really uh, affecting the timing is, you know, wanting to uh, show this, uh, you know, expanded vision with the launch of Instacart platform today and making sure that, uh, Kind of the rest of the world understand where we're going uh, with this uh, this more ambitious vision of powering the future of commerce for all grocers, uh, because that's the company I want to take public and I want to attract investors that are bought into that long term vision over the long run. Fair enough, BG. Thank you so much uh, for chatting with us.